talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing, talking fishing. The antenna award for the best special interest or lifestyle program goes to Talking Fishing. Congratulations. I tell you what, uh, how good is this? Um, big thank you to Matt Field because 165 episodes ago we started talking fishing and uh, we are live every Tuesday night and it's, uh, it's a massive job to put together a one hour show every week for 35 weeks a year. And, uh, and, and seriously, we're just fishermen, we just get there and talk fishing. So we're very, very lucky that we can do what we do. Trelly and Adam are co-hosts, but there's a whole team behind that, Kevin, uh, you know, back in 2014, Kevin was there with hammer and nails making the set and it sits at 31 and uh, every week we get it out and we do this show and it's so good. Community TV, I've got to say, just does something for the Victorian community. And, you know, we've been able to drive agendas. Uh, we are the only television show, li uh, sorry, live television show that the Premier of Victoria and the Opposition Leader of Victoria in the last election came on. They did heaps of pre-records, heaps of news. But they came on a fishing show. And they actually promised to change fishing and we did that with Community TV. It's so good. Thank you very much. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And there you go, that was the cause of uh, very sore heads on Sunday morning, I can tell you. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Fishing. We are champions. We've got an antenna award to our name, and it's so good to, to have that. Ads, um, you were there on Saturday night, and it was a pretty special night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a great night, and unexpected. Yeah. Uh, nominated in two categories, and obviously took out the one, but we've got a packed show, so I'm not going to go on too long, but no. uh, Dave, I want to congratulate you, because this is a conception of your thoughts. Mm. Uh, you organise the show. Trolley's a bloody superstar, but at the end of the day, we sit here and and back you up and help present the show, but you put this thing together. So you deserve a massive congratulations. Mm. I appreciate your support in giving us the chance to get on here and say our piece, but you do a lot for the show and you bloody deserve it. Yeah, mate. no, well it's done. good. I, yeah, well, I, I, as I said in that speech, it's a team effort though too because the people behind the glass, they yell, oh, yeah, the crew they yell in our off. ear every couple of minutes. <laughs> we give and, them a hard uh, time. But you know, it's, it's good. So, but uh, Chris Trelly normally goes AWOL after about three episodes, but now he's lasted five. <laughs> he held then, in a bit longer. And he's gone. Season, yeah, already, he's up at the Murray so, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but welcome to the show again. No cool. stranger. So um, things over in Geelong pretty good? Yeah, looking good. The fishing's really heating up now. Yeah, so. Snapper biting yet? Just starting. Just They're definitely yeah. out there. They're just sort of probably waiting for that water temp to come up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Now, we, are, we do have a big show uh, tonight on Talking Fishing. We're, there is a bunch of fisheries regulations. In fact, the whole of fisheries regulations are being reviewed. So a couple of special guests in, in the studio tonight to talk about all that. Travis Dowling, no stranger to the show, good CEO evening. of the uh, Victorian Fisheries Authority. Good evening, Dave, and good evening to, uh, to all the viewers. And it's yeah. fantastic to be back on the show. And a newcomer, Kylie Walt. Thanks for coming in, Kylie. Now you are the. Uh, <laughs> oh, I should have written name. it down. It's come, on, come up, analyst. Analyst. <laughs> come up on the screen. Analyst, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> there you go, principal policy <laughs> analyst. I had to read that yeah, myself. Yeah. So okay, yeah. um, we're going to throw you in the deep end tonight. Sure, sure. Mm. Thanks, gonna, Dave. It's good to um, <laughs> 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 be welcome. But you can talk about it. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the sort of stuff policy you eat and breathe all day long, don't you? So it's good to you know be be here in a different environment talking. And someone's got to do it. That's right. Do you fish yourself? No, I don't fish. Yes, no, I, don't. Yes, I have had a crack though, but I don't mm. pose much of a threat to the uh, yeah, stock. Yeah. So I have a crack. I've gone fishing with Trav, but I'm not, yeah. not really. Well, you wouldn't have caught myself. No, no, I wouldn't no, be admitting no, to that. No, so. no, no. No. But, you know, I, I, I've been with fisheries about 14 years now, so I, I really enjoy working yeah. there in this environment, you know, sustainability yeah. and just seeing the kids getting out there fishing and just yeah. the growth of fishing out that time has been great. So, yeah. Yeah. so tonight we're going to go through, there are 20 proposed changes to fishing regulations uh, for recreational fishing. Yeah. Why is this review going on? Well, every piece of Victorian legislation sunsets after 10 years. So 10 years up for the fisheries uh, regulations. Okay. Um, your audience is probably aware of the fishing the guide. Well, that's mm -hmm. the summary of the big 
the big document here. Um, so these every ten years they sunset, and it's a good and opportunity. That to, big document is that the regulations? That's the regulations. So that's the oh, fishing wow. guide for 2020. So, so I hope everyone gets used to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kylie knows every word in that by yeah. heart. <laughs> so this is the user-friendly guide yeah, to cool. this for wreck fishing, but um, it's a refresh of the. It's time to have a makeover. Make sure the regs still. Um, are uh, modern, fit for yep. purpose, and that we still need them because you yeah. know cutting red tape is. Yep. Um, we're always looking at ways we can reduce yeah. the burden on on the community, on all our stakeholders, and that's what this is a good opportunity to do. There you go. All right, we're going to go through all twenty, but before then, folks, let's have a look at what's being caught by the people at home. It's time for catch of the week. Catch of the week, brought to you by Shimano. All right, let's kick it off. I know it's snapper season, but I've got to say, the whiting had just been sensational. Yeah, right? yeah, now, let's, yeah. let's have a look uh, at Royce and Cade, King George whiting on the middle spit. Now, yeah, we had to cut a bit of the photo, but in between those boys all lined up on the boat floor, there was a bag of King George whiting on the so, middle spit. So they didn't just catch a couple, it was yeah. a good sesh. No, what a great they got, they feed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, absolutely mm. fantastic. But the snapper have started, I'd have to say, in Western Port a little bit earlier than mm. Port Phillip. Yep. And a regular to this show, regular contributor, is 97-year-old Got to get him in one, mate. <laughs> Got to get him on? Yeah, I reckon. Okay, well, they'd have to carry him in or something. <laughs> and sit him up and there's a lift. Yeah, yeah, there's a lift, I guess, yeah. But 97-year-old Don Newman, have a look at the... He went out for whiting, couldn't Don't catch a whiting. Yeah, really. But That's some nice beautiful... Too. They're fresh-looking oh, fish, too. And they're great size, too. Yeah. They're really good eating size, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. And Donnie's a mountain of a man, so yeah, they yeah. are. They're good yeah, fish. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He was wrapped to open his account. Yeah. Um, young, uh, a young fellow went out with his father to get his... Well, he's, he's tried quite a few times, but finally got his first gummy shark. Jack Smith, have a look at this, off Warneat. Mm -hmm. That's a cracking... That's a good uh, fish. That's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a great fish. Good Absolutely. Be happy with that. Bet your dad tucked into that with a bit of beer batter and <laughs> <laughs> lemon. <laughs> All right, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, good to see the young fellas out with their parents, isn't it? And, yeah. um, you know, school holidays, yeah. all the kids. I mean, you had your big event at Seymour yep. on the weekend, which was sensational. Great turnout. But while Seymour was going on, yeah. Jack Numa, young seven-year-old Jack Numa, he got out with his dad. <laughs> look at that. Oh, look, at that. Look, at, well, look at that. The you know, struggle is real. Six point one kilos. Thank you very much. It's yeah. <laughs> great. Happy, it? How good yeah. is that? Uh, all right, let's head over to Port Phillip Bay because yeah. there's been a few fish caught in Port Phillip Bay too, and some. Well, you'd have to say we had some pretty good weather, but then how was today? 14 and yeah, hail. Back right to winter yeah. again. Yeah, I know. Right. What is going Melbourne. on? Over in Port Phillip Bay, Black Rock, Benny Varta. He got a lovely three kilo It's kayak snapper. country out there, Dave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, kayaks. Mm. <laughs> they come with drink holders, do they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> Benny, well done, <laughs> Benny. Um, down to Rye, King George Whiting uh, uh, on fire as well. Ross Failer. He got some lovely King George Whiting out of fry. Look at the conditions yeah, in the background. Oh, yeah. That's what you want. Do you well, catch no, him off the pier? No. No, okay. no, that's the pier at the <laughs> new boat ramp. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, beautiful fish. Don't worry know, about so snappers. They do like the still water, water don't they? Yeah, they do, well, they like yeah. a bit of flow, but mm. no, you know, no chop. chop. You can really, yeah, yeah. it just helps you, Trav, as an angler, find the sand holes, be able to cast mm. to the perfect position. Your boat's not, you know, swinging around on the anchor or anything like that. No. So uh, it is good. Now, Trav, something I want to talk to you about, and before we mm. see the last catch of the week, mm. is those stonkers you put in have been really difficult because you guys don't seem to work with the water authorities and there's mm. been this environmental flow that's yeah. just flooded the banks and no one can mm. get access to them. What well, I'm a, um, I'm a pretty glass half full man, so yep. those enviro flows are going to be helping our cod and yellows breed in the lower Goulburn, yep. which is fantastic because it yep. springs when we want those big flows down there. Yep. At the same time, those stonkers which have come out of a hatchery yeah. are going to be getting wild, they're going to be in there for a few weeks, no yep. one can really get at them. That, those enviro flows are going to taper off yep. and then those stonkers, which are you know 10 pound plus fish, are basically going to become wild fish yep. and they're all going to be around those entry points and yeah. people are going to go down there and they're going to flick their selter in or their rapala or yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're going to catch okay. what's you know almost a wild I, I got a, I got another report that there was a thousand trout being caught at Malwala but anyway it's <laughs> right, well <laughs> no 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 yeah, yeah. Joking. So have a look at this Goulburn River a wild brown trout Gary or it might be a stocked one I guess mm. do you stock browns Gary Norton that is a lovely brown a in the Goulburn good looking so fish. we, we yeah. put 10,000 browns a year into awesome. the Goulburn but we put them in about this size. 
Oh, yeah, okay. So by the time they get to that size, they're yeah. um, they're definitely a wild fish. Yeah, it's okay. a great fish. Yeah, uh, Gary was staying at yeah. Blue Gum, mm. so that's you know quite a fair way up towards yep. the the pond. Really. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so we're under Gary. If yeah. you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pick to info at Go, go pie! Pie! Yeah, I want to go fishing. And coming up next, fisheries news. We send our roving reporter for a sneak, <laughs> don't laugh, our roving reporter for a sneak peek at the new native fish hatchery site at Shepparton. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. And we are joined tonight by Travis Dowling from VFA and Kylie Walt from the VFA uh, talking about regulations because there's a big review going on. But before we do that, Trav, fisheries news. Mm -hmm. Have you guys selected the site for the new native fish hatchery? Oh, we are so close. We are that close to having that site for what we believe will be Australia's biggest nutty fish hatchery, which is going to secure our fish stocking future mm. in Victoria, hopefully for the next 50 years. Okay. Well, we're very well, close. Well, we sent our roving reporter up to Shepparton this week, oh. and this is what happened up there. Good evening to Dave, uh, Adam, Trelly. We are in the beautiful part of the world near Shepparton, and we're looking at sites for the new very exciting native fish hatchery for Victoria. Travis Dowling from Fisheries. I'm joined by Anthony Forster and Danny. Boys, how are we going? Well, we're going well. Today we're at a, one of our final sites, uh, site selection. We've looked at 25 sites for the last six months and we're getting very close. Um, we're excited because we think we've found soil, good clay, good water, uh, a really lovely landscape and uh, standby for the yeah, it's been quite a quite an effort to get to this point, but we've done a lot of design work. Really happy with what we've done, and we think we've arrived at a point where we can go forward. Soon we'll have a new hatchery, everyone. It's very exciting. You obviously got permission to stand on that farm then, if you haven't quite <laughs> selected it. Well, the beautiful thing about that is, what you can't see in that shot, is that farm is right on the Goulburn River as well. Mm. Is it really? Yeah, yeah it is. Get your camping site then? Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's right on the Goulburn River. Well, the other really important thing is uh, having the right water quality, and Anthony talks us through that in this video. Anthony Forster on with fishery. Today we're out with the crew looking at our new native fish hatchery site or one of our preferred sites and we've uh, put a pilot bore in we're looking to see whether there's any good quality deep groundwater we've gone down 86 meters bingo we've got some wonderful water here let me have a taste magnificent fantastic mate that is excellent looking water and why is it important to have clear water groundwater is really good because it grows algae but it also has no no pathogen load, no diseases, no bugs, nothing like that. The groundwater is a really important factor in any new hatchery. Fantastic. Is that it for cotton yellows? Absolutely. We're getting excited. No, well done to our roving reporter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm there in yeah. oh, thanks, mate. That's um, it's important info, and it's terribly exciting. I mean, people who love fishing for cod and yellows yeah. and silvers and catfish, yeah. like it's a, it's something. You know, it's the most exciting thing I reckon in native fish fishing in Victoria in the next, you know, in the last fifty years. Like this is going to be huge. Yeah. So it'll be massive. All right, one more bit of news before we move on to the fishing regulations. The Peninsula Snapper Challenge is coming up 
very shortly. All the details coming up on your screen. Nine days of competition fishing on Western Port and Port Phillip from the 2nd through to the 10th of November. There's an open category, a junior and kayak divisions. Why they did that uh, is beyond me. The Over $20,000 in prizes. One yeah. in five entrants will win a prize. If you want to enter, peninsulasnapperchallenge.com. Uh, ring David on that number on your screen there if you've got any inquiries. But get on to peninsulasnapperchallenge.com if you want to enter the comp. And uh, the boys will be actually at both stores, Tatwell, Cramond and Mornington, on Wednesday tomorrow between 5 and 7 o'clock. I'll get oh, a bit of a yes. snapper do on at both shops. If you want to come in and see the boys, they'll enter, it, enter you in it too. So, all right, now we did talk about um, there's 20 proposed changes to fishing regulation. So yeah. a reminder, Kylie, the book. The big that, one? That, no, the no, well, that, <laughs> that one, the fishing guide, that's really the regulations in that's layman's regulations. terms. So yeah. if you can imagine all the bag limit size, yeah. that's the that's stuff that you have to review yeah. every 10 years. Yeah as well as all of the uh, regs for the commercial sector and agriculture businesses yeah. that's all so you've got to do in, yeah. all those regs yeah. as well all of them but mm -hmm. so just a small job yeah we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna talk about the 20 uh fishing regulations that are proposed to be changed for recreational fishing and the number one is uh, and i'll just read these the salmonid closed season for Mount Emu Creek and the Moyne River will be removed to allow fishing year round. So that's a bit like the Western District's rivers. It absolutely is. And so it's basically trout. What we're talking about yep. is uh, is getting rid of the closed season for trout in those western areas. We did the Hopkins and we did the Merai, yep. but some of the tributaries of those, the Mount Emu and uh, what was the other Moyne. one? Moyne. Uh, we, we didn't we didn't get them. Yep. Uh, but thanks to Kylie and thanks to a guy by the name of Scott Lawrence and a team that worked really hard, They've all been now included. I'm going to stop talking. Yep, now. No, no, that, that's right, and it's a good outcome. I think for fishers, they can. Yeah, yeah. Get there's plenty of fish in there too. Yeah. So yeah. Just checking the figures, and there's yeah. quite a fair few. Well, it's yeah. like yielding yeah. with cod all year round. If they're not, if they're not um, mm. breeding there, yeah. and they're, it's a put and take fishery, mm. why, not why not make it available yeah. all yeah. the time? It's a great yeah. option. Yeah. Mm. Uh, number two, the offences relating to fishing in on. Uh, in or on Ryan's Creek between Lumbar Weir and Macalsay Weir near Tatong. I've got no Tadong. idea with Tadong. 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 Yep. No idea. They've got to be near Murchison uh -huh. or something. Will be removed. <laughs> exactly. Will be removed. So what, what was that about? Offences? Well, that, that is really just uh, one of these. Like I said, we're trying to get rid of regs we don't need anymore. Yeah. And that particular catchment is actually, that's, it's you can't go in there anyway. So that offence is actually irrelevant. So this is just oh. a clean up. This one has no impact. It's um, You can't fish there anyway. So oh. this one's a minor, sort of just a clean up. So right. easy one. Easy. Mm -hmm. Boys, I want your opinion Next. on this. Right, this is controversial, I reckon. Highly controversial, <laughs> this yep. one. Yep. The catch limit for bash yabbies, which is currently 100 bash yabbies, will be replaced with a volume limit of half a litre. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Oh, I think so too, because I pump for bash yabbies mm -hmm. down on the peninsula. Yep. And when, when I pump them, you pump them into a live bait bucket. Yep. How am I meant to measure? How would you measure half a half a litre, Chris? You'd have to have some sort of container that's already sort of sized, I guess. Mm. But we, um. we, we've done it before with pippies. I know yeah. they're different. I know yeah. they, they swim around. But you know, we brought in that two litre bucket. You know, we're, we're wanting to work with the rec fishing community. Mm. But there was really strong feedback we received from the rec fishing hey, community. So count, yeah. counting a hundred yabbies each time and you're worried that you've got 103 or you might have 105 or you might yeah. have 92 and you don't want to get pinged. The idea is just say, well, you know, if you come up to about this size, you know, yeah. in a bucket, mm -hmm. we're saying that's enough and we're saying that that yeah, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. And it stops, rec it stops our fisheries officers there all night as well. Yeah. 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 So does that half litre, is that roughly 100? Yeah, we got some yeah. fisheries officers out to measure, measure what, you know, what yeah. 100 yabbies yeah. weigh, and that's where that number's come from. And, and so, our job, so you're not, so you don't change in the actual, yeah. Yeah. you can catch. Yeah. Still pretty much we're, we're not, yeah, yeah, we're not trying to catch people or trick people, we're trying to make life easier to yeah. go fishing. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's all about. We did get, we were asked to So we need to start selling half litre. Buckets. That's right, yeah. like a monkey, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> Get me the first on the market. <laughs> I've got a challenging question for you, and you may not be able to answer yeah. this, but can most of your fisheries officers count to 100? Yeah. They, oh, no, I was only joking on that. Well, no, 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 you were saying it about Dane. Was it Dane you were saying this for? Shout out to Dane. You know where we'll be going next. What's that? What about that bloke down in Moyes? I don't want to mention him, but can he count to 100? He's a good fisher, but I'm not sure he can count to 100. One of your back brake lights is out, Dave. Oh, I'm in trouble now. So, from now on, don't pump him into a 
Well, I use I use a like a ten litre bucket. Mm. I'm gonna have a separate container with five yeah. litres. Well, change is always hard, I'd say, half but people will find it. Yeah, easy. I don't cope with change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, this is controversial. Adam, I want your comments on this. The catch limit for goatfish, which is the fish of the family Millidae, will be increased from five to twenty. All I can say is there must be a hell of a lot of goatfish around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that about? Well, I think there's a number of communities that like to catch go goatfish for a feed, and five is not enough to yeah. feed your family. So there's a number of communities. I think the Greek community likes to catch yeah. them. So yeah. like red, um, red mullet. Yeah, yeah. they're not yeah. the biggest yeah. fish, yeah. so yeah. 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 it's not a sustainability yeah. issue for so us. So it's really yeah. just opening yeah. up that as a, yeah. another fi fish to target for families. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Nice. Yeah, sometimes we're accused of only going one way with our bag and size limits, which is less, less, yeah, less, yeah, and all the rest yeah. of it. But where we've got, we've put things in place, like we've brought out the Port Phillip Bay netting, and we've gone through different changes to make more fish available. Yep. If we know it's not a sustainability thing, well, why don't we make them available to the yeah, community? Yeah. 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 All right, the, other, the next one's pretty interesting too. Number five, mm. uh, the catch limit for sea urchins will be increased from 20 to 40. I didn't Ooh. even know this was like a highly... Like, yeah, yeah, I saw this around yeah. the outside. Yeah. I'd say like the row, no. don't they? The yeah, row like of the, the sea urchins. Yeah. Yes. So that's the thing. So we've got a developing commercial fishery for sea urchins. Uh, and people think, oh, why would you want to? But you look back at a lot of our really high value commercial species, some, at some point earlier on, they might have only been used for bait or sand as a pest, but now they're high value. Yeah. Sea urchins are starting to move into that category. Yeah. And um, we're doubling the limit because we want people to get out there because they can be invasive and they are invasive in Victoria. We want people to go and get them. At the same time, we recognise that it's some. We're not. It's green shawl crabs down at Lakes Entrance. It's an open bag, yep. but sea urchins. We're not going quite to an open bag, but we're yep. saying go and get some more. Um, but we have got a developing fishery here from a commercial perspective. Oh, that's right. mm. Interesting, yeah, yeah. And do you think there's? Um, so you obviously it's not a, a sustainability. No, um, not at all. Is, is there? And, and again, I'm I'm really out of my depth here. But is there is there a? Um, at the moment, is there a market where people are catching too many? Uh, look, probably would it, would it be similar to people getting abalone? I mean, it's in, they're in the same area, aren't they? No, no, I'd say that it's not. That's no. not an issue no. for us, no, okay. and that's why yeah. we're doubling the limits. Yeah. We, we do have an issue in some places where we're actually having to cull sea urchins because they are, um, you know, taking too over much, reefs yeah, okay. and eating too much. Okay, yeah, and, you know, this is encouraging people to catch more, but at the same time, still managing the fishery because yep. we have an emerging commercial fishery for them. Yeah. It's, sure. it's a it's a good win-win. We yeah, reckon. Yeah, and again, well. I think it's also some of the it's a cultural thing as well for some groups. Um, I think the Maori target like so, and yeah. uh, Aboriginals groups traditionally took yeah, urchins. Yeah. So why limit yeah. them if we don't need to? It's yeah. good. Mm. All right, going well. We've got five out of the twenty done. Coming up next product of the week we talk about how you know your battery is okay after winter and how you look after it for a longer life talking fishing And we thought we'd do something different for Product of the Week this week because many of you are dusting off your boats and getting ready for the snapper season. Many of you will have a pretty dodgy battery. So we thought we'd get to the experts and talk about batteries. Here we go. Well, it's that time of year people are getting their boats uncovered, dusting them off and getting out for a good snapper. And I'm here today with Michael from Seamaster Batteries. We're going to talk about what you need to do to get on the water for your first trip for a snapper. Now, Michael, it is the start of the season. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dave, for the opportunity to be here. Now, let's tell people about their batteries. What would you do? Let's wind the clock back. If you were preparing your boat for winter, what do you do with your battery? Well, again, I can only rely on how I prepare my boat yep. for the uh, hibernation season, let's say. The first thing I do is I disconnect one of the terminals to the battery. Yep. The next thing I do is I fully charge it. Yep. The second thing I do is I've got an isolation switch. So this is a new product in the market, it's called the Nambi. Very simple, anyone can do it. And it just clicks across, for on and off. So really easy to isolate the battery. It's, it's bulletproof, it's yep. simple, there's no moving parts, there's no wiring required. 
apart from simply just disconnecting the terminal, yep. putting on that, and putting that on the on the battery terminal itself. So, Mike, you've disconnected, you fully charged it before winter. Then, do you triple charge it over it, winter? Every, every month or so, just put it on triple charge, and it tops it up, and it'll keep it alive for years to come. All right, people are getting ready to go out for their first snapper, as they are now. What do you do to check that your battery's okay before your first trip? Not a problem, Dave. With the, the beauty of the Seamaster batteries, it's got an eye. If you see that's green, you're ready to go. Yep. Once you see that green, top it up a little bit with a charger, a triple charger, and you'll have boundless hours of fishing. What colour does it go if it's not green? It'll go to a, a black or a clear. So, Michael, you've determined that you need a brand new battery. You go in and buy it. What are the things you can do to make sure you get the best life out of this brand new battery? Well, the first thing I do is make sure there's an isolation switch. You just spend a lot of money on a new battery. Yeah. You want to be able to disconnect the power so it's not draining it. And always leave it on trickle charge if you can do over the, the fishing period. Yeah. You'll get years and years of service out of one battery if you take those small precautions. So keep it trickle charged. Yeah, every, every month or so, put it on trickle charge. Yeah. All right, there you go. If you want to enjoy your snapper season, particularly your first trip, make sure you've got a good battery because it's so hard to push start your boat. Good advice there from Michael. There you go. Uh, he, do you know Michael was the bloke that did uh, oils ain't oils song <laughs> back in uh, 1982, I think it was. Yeah, he did his first. It's just one of those things that catches you out, batteries. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. yeah, it does. And damn hard to push start your boat. Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. yeah. Course, uh, all right, we are here uh, joined in the studio by Travis Dowling and Kylie Walt to talk about the proposed changes to fishing regulations. We've got through five of 20, but there's. Uh, Plenty more to come, so let's get into them. Number six, the catch limit of Macquarie perch in the Yarra River will be reduced to zero to help this species recover in this location. So I'll just say on this very quickly, mm. a lot of your viewers, I reckon, will have caught a macca in the Yarra River. They might know that that's a translocated population that's come from north of the Divide, and originally it came to the King Parrot Creek in uh, Milk and Tunners. Anyway, the Yarra River... How do you know that? Because so, I love fish. <laughs> I'll, I'll, and I'll say one of the things, the Yarra River is one of the last and strongest populations of Macquarie perch anywhere yeah. in the world, right? So it is a translocated population, but it's th thrived in the Yarra. And um, with four and a half million people living in Melbourne, it is susceptible to being fished down. We need to look after it because mm. they're going to be our broodstock to rebuilding the Macquarie perch population everywhere in North East Victoria. And that's our goal. And we want to be breeding 500,000 Maccas a year. And it's in that uh, freshwater fishery... 10-year um, uh, vision. 10-year vision. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, uh, Macquarie perch protected? They are, okay. yes. I mean, you can still take them. Yeah, okay. Uh, because we we're having a debate today about something that's protected, like trout cod, yeah. right? Versus something that has a bag limit of zero. Sure. What's, with, what's the difference? Ah. Without, without being too um, uh, complicated on it, so Murray cod are protected, but they still have a bag limit. But they've got closed seasons, they've got bag limits and yeah. size limits. Macquarie well, perch have got a lot of waters where you're not allowed to take them because the population mm. is so remnant, you, just, yeah. you must leave them in there. But then there are some waters where there's a bag limit of one. Yeah. Okay, so... So one person interpreted this today as if something has a bag limit of zero, yeah. it means you're still allowed to target it, you're just not allowed to keep it. Yeah, and that's, uh, to is be that, honest... Is that right? Well, I think that's a bit cute, to be honest. Mm -hmm. In South Australia, do that... You don't know who you're talking about that, that thought that <laughs> idea up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Go um, on. <laughs> uh, well, well, I'll just say that South Australia have a, um, they're saying their cod fishery is open, but they have a bag limit of zero. So they're saying yeah. you, can go and, you can go and fish for cod in um, in South Australia, but, but you have so a zero like bag limit. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. No, and I'm yeah. saying, well, that's a protected no, but species. versus a uh, uh, trout cod, which you say is a protected species, you're not allowed to target. Hmm. Is, yeah, but is that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, all except the, in two lakes then. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we say you're not allowed to target them. We say no. you've got to let them go. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. So you go fishing for them. If you go and throw a spinner oh. bait in the goblin, yep. yeah, you're likely right. to catch heaps. So yeah. we're okay with that, so long as you let them go. Yeah. All right, clear yeah. as mud to the person yeah, yeah, who right. uh, Just don't asked take me them. to ask that question. <laughs> so they're, they're all recovering, so it's working. Yeah, all right. Uh, this one, and Chris, Adam, I want your opinions on this. The catch limit for river blackfish will be reduced from five to two, and the size limit will be increased from 23 to 30 to help this species recover to more sustainable population levels. What's your opinions on river blackfish? To me, it makes perfect sense because when's the last time you caught five river blackfish in one exactly. session? And it's a good exactly. one down our way in the Otway streams too, where they're, they're there, but they're probably not in great numbers. So yeah. this will just give people an opportunity for the future to catch Do them. Do you see people catching them, Chris? 
We have a few people come in and yeah. chase them, but they're not super popular. So yeah, just because yeah. I think they're probably their numbers aren't there like they're they used to be. So, yeah. so that, yeah. 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 Well, we, we, and we look at it this way. I mean, we want the next two generations to be able to know what a blackfish is yeah. and if they want to yeah. go out and catch one, rather than a couple of people these days going and catch a heap um, and then them not being around. And it's not just fishing pressure, it's things like land runoff, clearing, all these sorts yeah. of things that have impacted on them. Yeah. But let's keep them there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they're one of those unique species, I guess. They are. Yeah, beautiful. All yeah. right. Um, the l number eight, uh, the list of family fishing lakes will be updated. New lakes will be added, for example, Fern Tree Gully Quarry, and some removed to reflect the current areas where stocking occurs. Just to get Kylie. Yes, well, yes. it's just really updating the mm. list. It's just, mm. I mean, it's bringing it into line with where we're at, so adding a few more, to give more opportunities. Yeah, okay. For, yeah, more fishing so, so it's a bit of a tidy up, but also... By having a list in the regulations of family fishing lakes, does that mean there's different rules that apply to the family fishing lakes? Yeah, I think There are, is. there are. Yeah. yeah, there's different bag limits and different size limits for the family-friendly fishing lakes. Yeah. And it's to stop people going there and pinching all the fish before the kids can go and get them. But they're all displayed very carefully and clearly in the guide. Yeah. So <laughs> the difference between the family-friendly fishing lakes and the tail race rivers and impoundments. Trout were a little bit special in terms of that. Yeah. There's a couple of different regs, but it's pretty easy yeah. in here. Yeah. Yeah. Change All right, so yeah. I want to ask you a question about these because you've got now some family fishing lakes that are stocked with natives, mm. uh, particularly Murray Cod. <laughs> yeah. And would I be right in saying that right now it's closed season for Murray Cod and you can't keep a Murray Cod from a family fishing lake? Yeah, and that's an excellent question. Yeah, and and I'll, I will special. say, I think our stocking program and our innovation hasn't kept up with our regs. Yep. And whilst a lot of those cod that we're stocking in places like Melton and Lilydale and um, uh, Fern Tree Gully and others, a lot of those cod won't be at size yet. Yep. Um, our intention was never to have those fisheries closed during this period. So we need to... So do you need to add this to the change of the regs? I, I think it'll be something that'll come out of the regs changes. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Well, we're going to tell you to yeah. how to make, have your say, because everyone's allowed to have their say on this. Mm. Just one last one before we get to the break. Southern rock cod will now include red cod, bearded rock cod, large tooth beardy and slender... <laughs> There's a lot of beardy. cod. I've just yeah. learned this means a minimum yeah. size limit of 23 Slender centimetres beardy. and a combined catch one. limit of 20 fish per day, Chris. And if you catch a large tooth <laughs> beardy, yeah. uh, stick to your yeah, 23 20 fish per day. Right. When I'm out chasing the beardies next yeah. time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there, there you go. Coming up next, uh, we've got through nine. We've got 11 to go of these proposed fisheries regulations. We'll be talking about them more after this. Talking fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. And a special edition of Talking Fishing coming to, you, coming to you tonight. Travis Dowling and Kylie Walt in the studio from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. And we are going through uh, 20 proposed changes to fishing regulations because, as you told us earlier on the show, Kylie, um, every bit of legislation lasts only 10 years and has to be reviewed yep. and renewed. And so yep. that's what you guys are proposing now. There are 20 proposed changes to the recreational regulations and we're going through them all tonight. Let's. Let's kick off again with number 10. Tar wine will be included in broom size and catch limits to remove any confusion regarding fish identification. Good idea, Ads? Great idea. They, they mm. can look so similar, especially at mm. a, you know, a smaller legal to, you know, the smaller end of the legal yeah. spectrum. Mm. Sometimes it can be really hard to tell them apart. It's yeah. like a lot of the ones we have already spoken about and continue to, to talk about. A it's just common sense. Yeah. 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 It's a simple it's just common sense. Yeah. State statewide, or are they more a Gippsland? No, Gippsland. Yeah, yeah, we don't change it. You might see them in Maroon or in Malacuta, yeah. 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 A bit yeah. like Duskies, you know, yeah. that sort of yeah. region. Yeah, I've been throwing all the tar on I catch back, but I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm in for... And, and, and what, only keeping the brim? <laughs> yeah. That's right, well, yeah. No, I need... Yeah. Don't <laughs> with nothing. Don't <laughs> with nothing. That's just a clean-up, really, yeah. simplification. Just make it easier for us. So at current regulations, could you get 
I think there would have been a separate bag limit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Trev. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so Good. many jokes about yeah, Travis is fishing, but anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, this is an interesting one. Mm. Number 11. Clarify the bag limit for swordfish and marlin as a combined one fish per day. Do you know why this, this one to me is exciting? Why? Because swordfish is actually a thing now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No one had seen one yeah. only a few years ago. Well, 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 yeah, they were even now. anywhere yeah. near here. Now we've got to talk about bag limit mm, on yeah. them because you can go and catch it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And more it's than good, one. Chris, I'd be interested in your thoughts, right? Because we get a little bit of feedback around introducing boat limits on certain species. And this potentially could be in one of those categories where you go, if three anglers go out and kill three uh, swordfish, is that too much? <sighs> should there be a boat limit? I reckon there should be, yeah. I just mm. think, like, you don't really need three swordfish. Mm. No. One's plenty. Trav, do you get that sort of feedback? We, we do, and we've resisted it to this point because yeah. we've got a size and bag limit. You don't have a boat limit on anything. No, do you? we no. don't. And some of the other states mm. have got it, but we've we've just resisted over regulating. And yeah. from us, I mean, there's two things. There's one, there's from a sustainability point of view, and then the social license. And fishers have been really good at regulating themselves. They and do. Yeah. Most yeah. of the skippers yeah. Yeah, will definitely. know. If you brought in three, four hundred kilo um, swordfish, you know, to the people would, other fishers would say, hey mate, you know, that's not the right thing to do. So no. they've been pretty good at regulating themselves in that space. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other species that does come up about a boat limit sometimes is King George Whiting. Yeah. yeah. Because mm. three blokes go out and they can have 20, 120 yeah. fillets yeah. between them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's often debated in the shop, I can tell you, about yeah. King George Whiting yeah. And, yeah. and whether there needs to be a boat limit on those. And I'm not suggesting e either either, but it certainly They're is a debate. They're always interesting conversations, yeah, that's yeah. right. And, and it is a funny thing, and, I'll, and it'll be really interesting for your viewers to consider this. I mean, there is some studies that suggest 5% of the people catch 95% of the fish. I think that's changed. Yeah. Well, I you, think that's changed. Because if you bring that rig in and you're, yeah. you know, you're capping them, there's a lot of other 95% of people. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people, people go out yeah. there and find it really hard to catch a wire. Tra yeah. Travis. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> so, something I should have mentioned <laughs> up until now, yeah. that these regulations are now out for public... That's yeah. comment. Right. Mm. Yes. And if you want to comment on them, you've got to when, Kylie? The 29th of October, which is a Tuesday. So, so a couple a few of weeks' time. Yeah, couple so weeks. if you want to find where all this is, it's uh, just Google fishing, uh, sorry, fish regs 2019. Just Google that, fish regs 2019, because it's a really long uh, website. Yeah. We couldn't fit it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, you've got virtually little drop-down menus and yeah, very yeah. easy so to the, all give the, feedback. Yeah, all the documents are on there. The, the full another big document uh, yeah. is a regulatory impact statement. That, yeah. that talks about why we're having the regs and what's the rationale yeah. and the impact. But there's also a couple of short fact sheets, which I think you've got one there, Dave. One yeah. for each of the sectors. There's a recreational yeah. one, a commercial one. Yeah. Summarises the key key um, changes in the regs. So that's all there on that website. Right. And yeah, drop down boxes. Very, very quick question. Do yep. policy analysts, how many trees do you kill a year? Like, with paperwork. Lots. Well, I, we have right. Just checking. Yeah. Right. 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 I'm getting, now I'm getting yelled at for asking a stupid question. Let's go to number 12. This could be quite controversial. Mm. Yeah. Allow the use of mm. barbed flying gaffs with a hook for game fishing. Mm. Yeah. Well, we've got, we've been, uh, this oh. one's one that's this, uh, yeah, this is come up. Oh, you, mm. Did you want no, to? No, no, you go for it. Well, it is as, as it is. It's, um, we have had a lot of people ask us, so a few yeah. issues there. It's safety on the boat for the fishers. Yep. So if they bring something in, it doesn't yep. just if you fall off on the boat. Yeah, yeah, He's a big yeah. fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and it can yep. be, you know, so it's about safe fishes. It's about yeah. animal welfare, making sure when you actually actually do pull a fish in that you keep the fish and don't sort of have it, yep. losing it in the water okay. to die. So there's a few few reasons where it's actually made makes some sense. Yep. Mm. Um, All right. But just boys, it, it, is there any gaffs on the market with the barb? Because I don't think there is. Well, yeah, because ah. you haven't been allowed to use no, it. They're, yeah, no, they're allowed. Uh, I'd love to ask about harpoons. But yeah, hundred percent. Getting yeah. yelled at to yeah. keep yeah. getting yeah, no, through them. So, come back to that. Let's not uh, come back. Allow. To that. Okay, <laughs> number number thirteen. <laughs> number thirteen is not about harpoons. <laughs> allow handheld spears with more than two prongs <laughs> and barbs to be used where handheld spears are currently permitted. So you're not allowed to use them in all places. But yeah. this is this is sensible. Does that include harpoons? Uh, no, no, that's, no. that's handheld <laughs> spears. <laughs> with more than yeah, which yeah. technically a harpoon is. Yeah. Um, but this is this is makes sense because when you go spear fishing and you want to whack a flathead on the head, mm. you, you want barbs in it. Well, it's mm. kind of similar to the four. Same argument. Well, yeah. I may have used a five it prong in the past. Argument. Well, it's about getting rid of um, technicalities <laughs> that yeah. don't make sense, yeah. and we don't want to fine people for things that don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. Mm. 
right, that's good. The tethering, uh, this is number 14, mm. yeah. the tethering of fish will be prohibited. This means fish will no longer be permitted to be placed on stringers. Keeper nets will continue to be permitted. This is a big one, and I, look, I grew up tethering Murray Cod, yeah. and, um, and times have changed, right? So the, the, the think that the, to think that you're going to keep a, a cod in the slot or a yellow bell in the slot or something like that, and you're going to tether it for a couple of days because you don't have eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. People are saying that as cruel, mm -hmm. and you either keep it in a keeper net rather than you know hook through its lip on a piece of green cord. Um, and it's moving with the times. It's uh, you, you still can keep a cod, yep. but you keep it in a keeper net or you keep it on ice, but you don't yep. keep it sort of. Yep. You know, yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, number fifteen: the recently introduced prohibition on the use of opera house nets for yabbying in private waters, currently affected by a fisheries notice, will be transferred into regulation. So, are you you really can ban y opera house nets on private waters, Kylie? I'll leave that one. Yes. Yes. No, 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 only because I, the traps are not close to yeah. this one. No, 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 no what yeah. we're saying is they're prohibited equipment in yeah. Victoria. In Victoria. So yeah. if you're, not you know, you're, you're not allowed to possess them and you're not allowed to take them out. Now that's said and done. The you know, we'll just say we're not going to we're not going to come in and kick people's doors down. Yeah. The intent of this is to just get opera house nets away from public waters yeah. and to stop people and like, private waters. Uh, yeah, and private waters because platypuses might live in. Well, no, it's not. It's not about that. What's okay. actually happening is that we're saying get rid of them entirely, and we have to do it for private waters because a lot of people are going around the rules and they're saying, oh, we're just selling these yeah. for people to use in private waters. But then people who, uh, from a non-English speaking background, or people who don't really know what are coming in and buying these nets and they're using them in public waters, right? So the yep. only way that we can get rid of them entirely and stop people getting an $850 fine who don't know they're committing an offence is say so opera house nets just aren't going to be used yeah, in Victoria. Yep. But pyramid nets will work really well. All right, yep. let's get moving along. Number 16 is persons who identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders will no longer need a recreational fishing licence. Yeah, I just think this is a fantastic change. Yep. I, um, we're, Aboriginal community in Victoria have been really strong advocates of working with wreck fishers and commercial fishers yep. and um, and respecting some of their cultural fishing and you know basically 40,000 years of fishing history. Yep. For Victoria, for us, it means our compliance officers aren't sitting there asking people to demonstrate which country they're from and how they work. Yep. You identify as Aboriginal, you don't need a licence. Yep. We want you to go and enjoy your fishing. You know, that's yep. it's a good, good move. move. Yep. Yep. All righty, uh, we're getting through them. We are up to number 16. We've still got a few to go, but coming up next after the break, the all important hotspots and uh, one, two, three, four regulations still to discuss next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worsland's Tackle World Cramming. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for. Hotspots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. And if you've only just joined us, we are joined tonight by Travis Daly and Kylie Walt from the Victorian Fisheries Authority, running through the proposed fisheries regulation changes. Before we get back into that, the all important hotspots. Uh, I'm gonna roll through these really, really quick, guys. Yep. So let's kick it off. Queenscliff, the big calamari are in. Yep, and just say uh, yes, do it. They've taken up residence, yep. They have, Chris, getting plenty of reports. Yep, the yep. bite. Yep. On the map there, that's a great spot. And just yep. around the corner out the front of Swan Bay too, that's another good spot. Okay, Here's very good. Way. Let's keep rolling uh, over the other side of the bay. Seaford, 13 metres. There's uh, snapper starting to appear in those shallow yep. waters and, and go even shallower. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. First. Full moon coming up, I think, Friday mm, or yeah, Saturday. Right this They'll go off their nuts. Um, let's get over to Western Port. Hastings off Lysart's, 18 metres, plenty of snapper there. And the old capital of uh, Western Port for snapper this time of year at the early season is Coronella. Now, an update, Coronella boat ramp is, I wish I'd have written down the date. Yeah, I reckon it's, it's about 10 days away. Yeah, it's close, uh, like this month. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's not this Saturday, but next. Nice. Uh, it looks it unbelievable. Will open. There's, there's lots happening, isn't it? Oh, there's there's lots, happening ha everywhere. lots happening everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So Coronella will be open. Uh, last two, I'll if you want to travel, you want to travel a little bit. Lake Parambit is absolutely firing for big brown trout. Yeah, mud eyes in the shallows there. There's yep. The trout are averaging about two, two and a half kilos at the moment. So. Nice. It's yeah. also there's a few other species in there too. You Caravan do. Park all up and running. Again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's looking good. Yep. yep. John Clements yep. doing John's a great job. Yep. Yeah. All right. And the lucky last one. This is one of my favourites. The Hauka River. Yeah. Get in uh, there before on the peak on the sun. way to Jamison. One yeah. of your little favourite towns, Trevor. Beautiful. Some beautiful uh, trout making their way up the Hauka River, which was really really good to see. All right. Let's get back into the regulations. Number seventeen. The requirement to carry an abalone measuring instrument when recre recreationally taking abalone will be removed. Yep. Uh, existing size limits will continue to apply as will I guess the 60 days or whatever that you can fish. But yeah. So you used to have to carry one of those yeah. little plastic yeah. things. Yeah. Mm. Well, this is about another one of those removing the red tape, really. I mean, the other when you go fishing, you don't not require to carry your ruler around with you. Yeah. So same when you're fishing, I think people are pretty, you know, they know, they know what the size yeah. limits are, it's just they've got, to be res they've got to be responsible enough to know yeah. what sizes yeah. are. And so if they're not comfortable, yeah. they're well, stick take the tool out if you don't know, then, yeah. then bring the tool with you, but it's just you're not going to get fined if you don't it's have it. Yeah. Removing another thing that you can get pinged for, yeah. when we don't think you should get pinged for, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. one of those common sense yeah. things. Yeah. All right, this one's, um, love to hear your thoughts, boys. Number 18, mm -hmm. the amount of burley used in Port Phillip Bay, Western Port, Gippsland Lakes, any inlet of the sea or within one nautical mile of the coastline or island will be limited to 10 litres. Now, is that Who's a... Who's taking more than that? <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of burly to carry. Is that, a, is that a current regulation? It is a current regulation, what but are, what the, does it say the now? amount is the same, 10 litres, oh. but it doesn't say where. So we're just trying to get it oh. offshore. It, we don't want people burling for shark in, in co inland bays, inlets, yeah, yeah. close ah, to shore. Okay. So it's really a safety thing. Yeah, so, so it's not... A, making things more restrictive it's actually easing the restriction if you go if, offshore if you're 20 k's offshore burling so it's up increasing you can use more than more 10 meters that's offshore. it yeah. that's it Just if you're not in those areas way. and you're because yeah. the whole idea is we don't want to bring the big sharks in close to where yeah. the population centers up but if yeah. you're well offshore yeah. Well, yeah. you can use as much burl as you like that's fine there you go. I mm. didn't know about that. Explain that way. It actually it's it, that makes yeah, sense. That I was thinking the other yeah. way that yeah. you're restricting it to yeah. 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 which is, doesn't matter either way. Yeah. So it's oh, right. still a lot of burly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But some shark guys would probably take more if they're going mm. offshore for a mako. Yeah. yeah. Point Especially if you're out there for a long time too. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Imagine being 20 k's off and yeah. some fisheries. Now up this isn't one of your. So I'm just going to interrupt here because we've had someone. A gun brim fish show. Uh, Jeff Fraser has written in. Jeff Fraser of uh, the Bairnsdale Frasers. Yes. A gun brim fish show. He's gun brim yes, fish He's gone, what about a slot size for brim? Yeah, and I think that's a fantastic idea because yeah. we're, we're, we're transitioning out netting from the, the Gippsland Lakes. Um, there's some talk about the bag limits there in the Gippsland Lakes, but one of the things that's worked really well is a slot for duskies. You know, everyone goes down to uh, Lake Tyres now and catches these amazing duskies. Yeah. Um, it'd be great to have you know, a slot, and I'm yeah. sure it'll be recommended, and therefore to be that discussion with the Rec Fishing Committee uh, community, you know, maybe a 30 to 40 centimetre slot for brim, Perfect. plenty of, plenty of yeah. room there yeah. to yeah. take a feed. I'm yeah. a massive advocate yeah. for um, slot limits. Yeah. Yeah. Just definitely. looking at Jeff, the way he's wrote into us, so I don't think he's that prolific on a, uh, or that good on a computer. So, Jeff, if you need to <laughs> Google Fish Regs 2019, you'll find the page, and there's a very easy like drop-down menus and all that. That is how you put something like that up to you guys to consider. So. Yeah. Um, or, Jeff, if you need to get your neighbour who's good on a computer to do it for you, that's fine. Uh, You're getting a sledge, mate. <laughs> <laughs> number, nine, number 19. A new offence will be created for defacing or interfering with a fisheries-related sign, e.g. a sign erected by the VFA to detail catch limits. People wouldn't do that, would they? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. It, it's just... It's yeah, they do. It is, isn't it? <laughs> like it's, it's a lot of the times, so some I'm of these signs are paid for by rec fishing license fees and things like that, and we yeah. just hate having to replace them consistently where people think yeah, it's so a great still, idea. Still, a few bankers <laughs> around, Dave. Yeah, it, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, that's number nineteen. Number twenty. Uh, actually, I might move to this one because this is a bit longer here. Uh, a number of rules currently set out in fisheries notices will be transferred into the proposed regulations, including those relevant to the management of Murray Cod, Murray Spiny, Freshwater Crayfish, Rays, Golden Perch, Trout Cod and Trout. The rules specified in each notice 
e.g. bag limits and size limits will not change. That tidies up a fair few of those. Up. It does. So Some of those fisheries notices have been around two or yeah, three and, years, and haven't they? And it's quite a they? process renewing them every year. You know, it's yep. it's it's really a burden on both, both on us and on, on people that need to comment. So yeah. getting them in the regs, yeah. they're pretty well accepted now. Yeah, yeah. But some of them we brought in to test the water to see what people yeah, thought so about them, the, the request of fishers. Yeah. And when we can see that people mm. for three or four years like them, they, they're working, we can see they're working, yep. let's yep. just move on. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. yeah. Makes sense. Good stuff. So yeah. uh, what, people have got a couple of weeks to yeah, make comment. Yeah, a few weeks to make comment. Um, like I said, all the documents are there on the website. There's a link on the VFA website too. You'll, you'll mm. get, get to the page there. Yep. Um, like you say, drop down boxes. Um, yeah, go and have a, have a read of the fact sheets and, and make, a, make some comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely yeah, get great. amongst this too because it's, yeah. it's a great way to have an input. Yeah, yeah. 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 how you say. Yep. It's great to say the people who turn up actually decide what goes on in the world. Yeah. So, you know, if you, you know, yeah. We, yeah. we get a dozen people put in a submission on a particular thing. Yeah. Uh, You'll take notes. It's a strong right. Well, you yeah. want the input. It's not just yeah. to hear this is what's um, happening and deal with it. This is Can I, Kylie, Trev, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks They're for yelling us. us. <laughs> We've only got thanks 10 seconds. All so. Kylie's great work, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Scott a Lawrence. Team. Thank a team, yeah. 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 No, I really appreciate you guys coming in. That's it for Talking Fishing. Next week, we want to hear from you. Where is the best fish cleaning table in Australia? We want us to send your picks in. We want to know where the best fish cleaning table in Australia is. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son. <laughs>